Today we got a 2004 Chevy Tahoe and we got a random multiple cylinder misfire detected. The plane, okay, one this code. car stalls, hesitates, stumbles at idle. Okay, when you come to a stop sign, stumbles at idle. Look at that there. See how the spark plug is moving like that? Or the spark plug pull? We got movement right there. That's not normal. That should not be happening. So what we're going to do is we're going to tighten it up and then uh, I can feel the misfire right now, big time. So right now we're going to turn off the engine and tighten it up and then let's check the other side too. So go ahead and turn it off. Let me see first. Any other ones are doing that. So none of these are moving. So that may be the issue there. Okay, so go ahead turn it off. This is going to turn it off. Now, I'm going to see if I can, what the deal is here. Kind of loose. This one's not loose. These aren't that loose. This one is. Seems like this is barely. Okay, just pull this spark plug boot out. Off. Okay. See how it looks down there. Looks like that was wasn't on right. Okay, let's check the spark plug. See if it's loose. Oh, we got a loose spark plug, big time. So let's pull the spark plug out and then um, see what it looks like before we put it back in, or see if we have to get a new one. Let me show you this loose spark plug. Look at that. So whoever did this tune up didn't tighten this all the way, and that's probably the problem of our misfire. Okay, of our random multiple misfire. Okay, so put it down there. Let's take it off first and take a look at it. Just imagine if you would have took this to the shop. Okay, this plug's good. These were just changed, but they left them, they left them loose. Put this back in there. Start it lightly and wiggle it around so you don't start to strip it until you, until you feel it bite. What we're going to do is erase the cold and drive it around for a little bit, see if it's fixed. Okay, so tighten that up. Good to go right there. Okay, here we go. Stick this on there, like that. Snap it on. There, we should have no movement. So let me start. Okay. The real quick. So there's no more movement. Okay, perfect. All right, that's it. I just erased the codes. Check this out. We were gonna go for a test drive, but we don't even need to. We still got an issue here. Okay. Listen to this. I can hear a spark. See if you can hear it. I can hear a spark, a misfire out there. I can feel it too. What I'm gonna do is a brake torque test. Watch this. One foot on the brake, one foot on the accelerator, okay? Put it in drive. Okay, I'm gonna create, I'm gonna see if we get a misfire, okay? The misfire. I don't even know if you can see that, but we got misfire right there. You hear it okay we still got misfire and you can actually hear it i'm not even going to test drive it because i can hear it so let's go back out here and go check out look for that uh that arcing sound sound like it's coming from around here we've got to find out where exactly it's at okay i don't know which coil it is but i think it's one of these coils now let's go on this side and see if uh, we can hear anything on these coils. Hear anything? Mm -hmm. Nothing. No, no arcing here. But you can hear it over there on that side. So we just got to find out which one of these is arcing. Okay? We're gonna we gotta look for it. it Sounds like this one. One of these maybe. So let's look for that. 
what these are called is these are called coilover plugs, COPs, okay? Each, every, each individual cylinder, spark plug, has its own coil, okay? And it sounds like we got an issue with one of these two. I'm not really sure. So, we're gonna have to take this to the house and diagnose it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this to the house, we'll diagnose it, and um, swap one of these coils, put one of these over here and see if the sound moves. If the sound moves, then we know that it's one of those coils because it's gonna move with the sound. So obviously, it'll be one of those. So let's get this to the house. But first, let me tighten this up. This, this. Problems around here though, definitely. Okay, could it be the wiring? Not sure. So let's go get it to the house. That's what you do first. First do a visual while the car is on. Hold that right there, man. And then you wanna do a, a physical check on the wirings and everything, okay? Okay, as we're driving, I can still feel the misfire. Okay, the misfire comes and goes, and I can still hear the clicking a little bit. Okay, so, and I can feel it as I take off. So we do got a misfire in this car still. Okay, that loose plug didn't fix anything. But it's a good thing we did uh, tighten it up. So now we're gonna take it to go work on it. And, but right now I'm looking at the fuel trims. Okay, the fuel trims look all right, but still, we have an issue. I think we got a bad wire. plugs or a bad sure. coil, but we're gonna check right now. Okay, we're home. Okay, we're here now. Watch this. See those lines there? All that's richness. That's the misfires that I'm feeling right now. This car is very hesitant right now. I can feel the misfires big time. And every once in a while, it'll slow down on the misfires and it'll get normal. But all that is straight up misfire right there. See, the computer's trying to compensate and uh, adjust for everything right now. But it's having a hard time because the misfire is just uncontrollable. But that's not a good sign for an O2 sensor. Okay, first thing we're doing here is we're checking the wires. But the first thing you should really do you should check for spark in the area where you suspect the uh, misfire or the bad coil or bad wire or whatever, okay? But we're going to check the wires, okay? Just so you guys have a whole range of, because you need to check wires sometimes when you're checking for a misfire, okay? So before we check the coil, we're going to check the wires, and here's how you do it, okay? Put this here so they can see that, okay? We got number, what number is that? Let me see on, the, on that. Did I write it? Okay, number five. This spark plug wire is from cylinder number five, okay? Which is this one right here. So go ahead and give me a reading. So she came up with 0.847. Okay, so I'm going to jot that down here. 0.84. Okay, on these wires here, the second one there, we got 0.977. Okay, first one we didn't get anything. Let's double check. One of the fastest way to see if you got spark on your spark plugs, well going to your spark plugs, coming out of your coil, it's a timing gun. Okay, what you do is this, if you got a timing gun. Okay, but you don't need this. You can use a spark tester, which is cheaper than this. Okay, the timing gun costs some money. So get something you can hold the trigger down with. Like I got this rubber band here, okay. So what you do is this. Get that like that, and keep that trigger held down, okay? Hook up your timing gun, put the positive on the positive lead on the battery, negative on the negative lead. Now, this is an inductive pickup lead, okay? This detects the magnetic field around the wire. You wanna get this as close to the spark plug as possible, okay? Be careful though, because check it out. I left this leaning on an exhaust manifold, and look what happened. It melted it, but it still works though. So just be careful with your stuff. So get it down here as close to the spark plug as possible. 
Okay, what we did is we pulled out the spark plugs all on bank one, okay? And all of them were at 45 thousandths of an inch. So what we did is we brought them down to 40 thousandths of an inch. And this is number one, three, five, and seven. I'm gonna swap this one for that one. I always put a little bit of oil, okay? That helps get it on easier and it helps with the heat transfer. Okay, so check out this. This is the rubber boot, all right? You can get a rubber boot from any spark plug wire, just rip it off, okay? Put it on an extension or you can take it off, okay? And see the hole down there? It makes it a lot easier, okay? So I'm gonna come down like this and take off the extension. Don't put it on too hard, just put it on barely, lightly like that, so you can pull it off easy. Okay, so get this down here, get it in like that. Right about there, pull it right out. Okay, we just regapped all the plugs. We put them all to 40 thousandths of an inch. Okay, we changed this wire, and swapped it with number seven. So now we're gonna start it to see if the spark changed on our timing light. Okay, go ahead, start it up. Nice. Look at that. Much better. Sounds way smoother. Look at that. Engine smoother. Let's look at the vacuum now. We're looking at our vacuum. Vacuum not, the vacuum doesn't say it's good. It says late ignition timing. We're stuck at 15 inches of mercury. No, we need to be at 18 or 20. Between 18 and 20, 18 and 22. Okay, but our spark looks good here so far. But look at that. You know what? Erase the codes. Let's see if we got the misfire still. So now we got the timing gun hooked up to spark plug number three, spark plug wire. Okay, which is right there. See that right there? And this is the repair that we just did. Okay, because it was all broken. We broke it. But so far, no misfires yet. Well, at least it's not way better, and we're gonna wait to see if the misfire code pops up. Okay, did you erase it? Okay. Codes. System passed, no defaults detected. No misfire so far, no codes. We're good to go. So now, I'm gonna do a brake torque test one more time like we did at the beginning. Put it in drive. Okay, so now. No misfire. No misfires. Oh yeah. So it was those spark plugs. Something so simple, man. Be careful when you do the brake torque test, okay? That's it, man. We're gonna run it for a while. And uh let me look at the O2 sensor. Okay. whack so we still have an issue and the computer's trying to compensate I'm liking these readings way better than before though looks like it's clearing it up I like that look at that big difference right there big difference these matter when you're diagnosed when you're diagnosing stuff these readings matter the O2 sensors you really want to look at these things okay I think we're going to change these plug wires anyways. But I like the looks of this O2 sensor. Not bad at all. Okay? A little choppy sometimes, but not bad at all. Okay? So, let's go to the downstream O2 sensor. We're good. We're in the 700 range. 700 millivolts. We're good to go, man. Let's call that good. Okay? All right. So, let me go to these fuel trims again. Short term looks good. This looks good. I'm good with that, man. I like that. Okay, so. No check engine light still. No misfires. I swapped. We're good to go. That plug for that plug. Put that plug here. Okay? I swapped one and seven. 
and rotate them over here. Now, I'm also going to swap these wires. This is spark plug wire one. I'm going to put this over here with seven. I'm going to put number seven on number one. Okay? So the problem like here that. was those spark plugs. Okay, we did fix the problem. Let me show you something though. Remember we moved number one wire to seven? The sound moved over there with it. Okay? The sound used to be here, remember? Now the sound is back there. When you're diagnosing and you have two of the same, whatever, three or four or five of the same things, that's what you do. You swap we them. swapped this coil number one for five. We swapped them just to see if the sound would move with it. So it's not the coil because the sound is exactly in the same place. The, 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 uh, so the sound didn't move when we moved the coil. So we know it's not that That way coil. you can tell if it moves, then you know the problem with, is that. That specific thing that you move. Okay? We moved the wire, now the problem went over there. Okay? So it's the wires and the plugs. Okay? So the plug, but the plugs are good. We adjusted the plugs, so now we're gonna go get a new set of wires, okay? Listen, the sound's right here. Listen, the sound's right there. And every time it arcs, it misses. Okay, so that's where the problem is. Problem solved. Show us the light. Handle. Okay, look at that. See how that was? Off and on, look at that. Right there. That's got to be the problem. Look at the light. It stops. There we go, right there. That's got to be the problem, right there. Earlier, it didn't do that. See how it stops? That's the problem, right there. We got a mechanic that put the wrong gap on these plugs. But we're still going to change these wires because these wires are, that one's arcing. But we're just going to change them all because it's time. This is from 2004. These, these, these plug wires are from 2004 and uh, they're no good. So the power's back. It feels good. It feels strong. Like it should be. Okay? I don't feel any misfire. You can pull over to the side and do a brake torque test. Remember, the way you can start a misfire if you do have misfire problems, it's just brake torque, okay? And that's putting your foot in the, leaving it, leave it in drive, put your left foot on the brake, squeeze down tight so you don't take off. And then you hit, hit the accelerator. Then you hit the accelerator. No misfire. None at all. Fire. But I can hear that little arc still from that wire. No misfire. Good to go. Alright, let's take off. Okay. Let's go get some new plug wires. This car is done. Now what she's doing, she's looking for a leak. Any kind of leak. Okay? Just like the leak we got here in this hose. We're looking for one down here in the intake manifold area. And so far we got nothing. So it looks like we don't have a vacuum leak. Okay, earlier we were on the intake manifold right here. This plenum right here, this hose. Earlier we had this hose on there. Now we move down to the valve cover because we're checking to see if the gasket's leaking. Okay, go ahead and plug that hose up. This hose goes on there. Look how much smoke we're producing here. That's insane. That's homemade right there. That's all from this thing right here. Now we're going to move this over to this hose over here. Okay? Now we're going to check this side. We're good. No, no vacuum leak. Okay, vacuum leak test with the smoker. Done. Okay, we have no vacuum leaks. 
All right, so this, this engine is sealed. Okay, here, what we got is a vacuum gauge, okay? We're gonna check to see what the vacuum is. Normal readings are between 18 to 22 inches of mercury. Okay, here we go, let's do it. Go ahead, start it. Okay, we got a vacuum issue here. So there's an issue with this engine. The vacuum in the motor is definitely not right, okay? If you look at the green mark, remember, it's supposed to be 18 to 22 or 23 inches of mercury. We're not even close. Okay, so we have 15 inches of mercury right here. Okay? We do spark tester like this, okay? And um, this too. I got a brand new test light, finally, man. I had this one since 1990, around 93, okay? This is old, man. It's all beat up and, and broken on the tip there. But anyways, I got a new one, okay? I like this one. This has an LED in it. And this is perfect for the fuel injectors because this one doesn't work sometimes when you want to check pulse width, okay? On certain vehicles. But this one is good to go, right? Anyways, go pick up these two items to help you with your diagnostics, okay? Because if you want to be, if you want to diagnose this stuff right, man, you're going to need stuff like this. You got to invest time, you got to invest money into tools, man, if you want to do this right. Okay, now, you don't need that timing light, okay? Because I know some of you guys don't have it, but you can go pick up one of these spark testers, okay? Okay, so hook up that end on the spark plug, just like that. See how it is? Then put this in inside the boot that comes from the coil, okay? Just like that. So then let's start it up and check for spark. Okay, watch the spark tester, okay? Let me turn this light off so you can see. Okay, here we go. Okay, see the spark tester? That's just a simple way of checking for spark. Okay, one of these. So you don't need a timing light, all right? Okay, now we're gonna check for pulse width on each injector, okay? We're gonna see if we're getting a signal from the computer to pulse to trigger the injectors, okay? But the way to do that is with a Noid light or with a test light. Some test lights will work for this, some won't, okay? But your Noid light will work definitely for most of them. So what you do is this. What I got here is a piece of rubber, okay? with two safety pins, okay? I stab the safety pins through the rubber so that I don't ground out the fuel injector, okay? Because if you ground this out, you're either gonna blow out the fuse or you can blow out the computer, okay? You don't wanna do that. So pull the fuel injector connector off like this, and then you're gonna probe this like that. You're gonna jump both terminals, okay? Okay, see how they're separate? Do not let them touch, okay? Do not let these two touch at all. I'm going to put the ignition switch on the on position. So on this fuel injector, we got 6 volts, 6.6, 6 6.5 volts. I'm going to hook this up here, all right? This is our test light, just like that. Remember, do not let these touch, okay? I'm going to start the engine up. So now, we're going to touch this here. See the test light? What you're checking for is pulse width, okay? See the light lighting up? You need to have that triggering. What that's doing right there is that's opening and closing. Okay, and right there, we do have pulse on this circuit here, okay? So, and that's what we're looking for right there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check all the rest of it the same way, the same exact way. You can either do this with the Noid light like this. Okay, check this out. Right there, okay? Okay. Now, put the Noid light in, the fuel injector connector, pull it off the injector. All right, go ahead, start it. Okay, good to go, we got pulse width. Or you can use this right here, okay? Which is cheaper, okay? This was like nine bucks. Okay, then we're on cylinder number six, good to go. What we're doing is we're checking the resistance on the injector, and we got 12.5. Okay, right now, what we're doing, we're gonna do a fuel pressure check. Because when you got a lean misfire, what's going on, Sean? Because when you got a lean misfire, 
you also got to check to see if your fuel is being deprived, okay? You could have a bad fuel pump, a pinched line, a, a clogged uh, fuel filter, okay? You got to find out if your fuel delivery is doing all right, okay? So this is our fuel pressure gauge here. We're going to check to see what the fuel pressure Remember is this. on this, okay? You don't have any reason to give up. Keep your head strong, stay solid, stay firmly planted in Christ for you riders who know about God and who are in the Lord. Those of you who don't know the Lord, get your heart right with God. Don't play games. You got one shot to get this right. Don't mess it up. See this hose? See that hose right there? Show this one. Picture that as eternity. You see this tip right here? This is your life. This is 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80, maybe even 100 years. This is 100 years of your life here on earth. The rest of this is eternity, man. All this right here is eternity. Now you got one shot to get this right. This is all you got right here, okay? You got from when you're born as a baby to 100 years, 60, 70, 80 years. I don't know. I don't know how long you're gonna live. That's how long you got to get this right, okay? This is your only chance. Because when you stand before God, right here, when you die, when you stand before God, you're either going to go to hell for eternity, or you're either gonna go to heaven for eternity. You think that's a joke? Read your Bible, man. Dust your Bible off and read it. This ain't no joke. Take this serious, man. Jesus Christ loves you and he died on the cross for your sins. Make sure you get your heart right with God right now. Repent. What does that mean? Acts 2.38, look it up in your Bible. It says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That means you're gonna receive God in your life, and God will guide you, which is called providence. You know, his guidance, he will show you, he will counsel you. He'll walk by your side. He'll help you defeat things that are corrupting you, that are hurting you. You got anxiety, man? All those fears, man? I know I used to have that junk too, man. All that anxiety, man, it is going to eat you alive, man. You don't have to let that stuff eat you alive and break you up like that, man. You don't have to let that stuff break you down, man. You don't. Because with God, all things are possible. Don't ever forget that, man. Jesus loves you and he died for you, man. He died for you. Repent. That means turn your life around. That means to ask God for forgiveness. What you do is this. You say, Dear Lord Jesus Christ, please forgive me for my sins. Please forgive me for everything that I've done wrong against you. Please forgive me for taking the path, the one that led me to destruction. That way. Or that way. It doesn't matter. I want to be on the straight with you, God. I want to be right with you. I want my heart right with you. I repent. I repent and I ask you to please forgive me for my sins. I accept you into my life as my Lord and Savior. Please come into my life. Please help me in my life. Counsel me through everything. And there's two types of wisdom. You got man's wisdom and you got God's wisdom. Man's wisdom ain't gonna last. That's all good for now. You can go to Tony Robbins camp, walk on coals. You can go to Deepak Chopra stuff. This new age stuff, you can get uh, all that spiritualism from Oprah, all that junk, it don't last, man. It don't last. You can go to Wayne Dyer, man, and play with all that self-help stuff, it don't last, man. It'll be all right for now, temporarily, but in the end, it won't save your soul, okay? This ain't no how to stay positive stuff, I'm telling you, man. This is to provide you hope and to lift you up and to inspire you and to let you know that with God, all things are possible. And with Christ, you can do all things, man. You can overcome the devil. Everything he threw at you, everything, the way he's taking you, the route the devil's taking you, you can smash on it in Jesus' name. So in Jesus' mighty, holy name, stay confident, bold, and fearless out there. And go smash on it. Let's go get it.